Douglas Hayes was back again to direct his penultimate episode, Dust. This one proved to be a departure for him, as it's pretty much just a straight-up western with a little magic thrown in. It saw the return of a couple recognizable faces from previous episodes, but does that make it a must-see installment of The Twilight Zone? Set in a melancholy small town in the Old West, Dust follows the story of Luis Gallegos. A few nights previous, he drunkenly ran over and killed a little girl while riding his wagon. Louise was quickly sentenced to hang at the behest of the girl's parents, Mr. and Mrs. Canfield, and is constantly taunted by the slimy town salesman, Sykes. While Sykes sold the rope that is going to hang the young man, he gets another idea when he sees Louise's father begging for mercy. The peddler fills a small bag with dirt and flaunts it as magic dust that turns hate into love, the only thing that can change the hearts of the town and save Gallegos' son. Desperate, Louise's father pays for the dust and rushes to the gallows in hopes of saving his boy. This was a pretty dour episode with not a lot of energy to it. According to Hayes, that was by design. He wanted to give everyone in this small town a sense of hopelessness, like they all gave up on having a good life long ago. Rod Serling's original script had just about the same tone, but he did give the sheriff character a more confident and upstanding demeanor. Hayes changed that to give him an attitude similar to the rest of the town. He described it as listless. While Sheriff Koch wasn't really a coward or anything like that, he did little to stop the town from turning to its darker impulses. Everyone just sort of moves like zombies who are slowed down by a deep, profound sadness. And that emotion isn't limited to the event that killed the little girl. It's explained by Luis's father that his son drinks so much because of that mutual sorrow everyone in the town has grown up on. He had this sadness, deep inside, sadness that there was not enough to eat, sadness that they had no work, sadness the earth all around him was growing bare in the sun. Vladimir Sokolov stands out for his believable, anguished pleas for his son's life. Credit to Serling's writing and Sokolov's delivery for creating such a sympathetic character. He has the same deep-set misery as the rest of the town, but he's able to expound on that emotion in a strong performance. The exception to Hayes' low-energy rule was Thomas Gomez's Sykes. From the beginning, that character is filled with a boisterousness that's easy to remember since he has the only lively personality. Sykes is a real unscrupulous agent with no shame. He mocks Louise from outside his jail cell before tricking his sister and father into buying the magic dust. And he does it all with an evil grin and ridiculing laugh. 100 pesos of worth of magic dust. <laughs> While he's probably the best thing about this episode, Gomez is more memorable for me in his first trip to the Twilight Zone. He played Mr. Cadwallader, aka the Devil, in Escape Clause. We reviewed this Season 1 episode last year, so go check out my full thoughts on that if you'd like a refresher. Gomez was great in that story too, but I feel like he wasn't involved in an episode worth his talent for either of his appearances. Sykes attends the public execution of Louise to sadistically watch Gallegos make a fool of himself. But things don't go quite the way he planned. Just before the sheriff drops Louise with the rope around his neck, Gallegos runs in front of the crowd to throw the faux magic dust on the mild mob. Pay heed to the magic! 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 You must pay heed! He repeats that line about 50 more times until the trap door drops behind him, but when he looks back, Gallegos sees that his son is still alive. Louise's rope broke and he was spared the hanging. The crowd is shocked and confused. Sykes mentions that it's impossible. He sold the sheriff a brand new rope. It was five-strand hemp, and inexplicably, it snapped. The sheriff asks the Canfields if they want a second attempt, but they refuse. We leave it like this. One victim is enough. I think we should all go home now. The crowd leaves the sheriff to inform Louise and his father that the young man can go free. Gallegos is convinced that the magic dust worked, turning everyone's hate into love. This further perplexes Sykes. Confused, but eventually believing the same, he walks away, giving the gold pieces Gallegos paid him to a few begging children. We then end on a shot of the broken rope. All in all, Dust doesn't have much going for it. 
Considering the fact that one of the Twilight Zone's greatest directors was at the helm, one would have expected more. Even the production is clunkier than usual, with a lot of obvious ADR toward the beginning and creased backgrounds behind the gallows at the end. Granted, we only notice those kinds of details now that it's in HD. Back when this aired in 1961, I highly doubt anyone caught that sort of stuff. But it is odd since Douglas Hayes was usually so meticulous with his production design and visuals. He did manage to give his young son a cameo though, so that's a notable tidbit. Jerry Goldsmith did the music here, but it doesn't ever rise above your standard, dreary Old West style ambience. I feel they could have easily gotten away with stock music and saved Goldsmith for a better episode. In the end, Dust is a heavy-handed, slow, dull installment of the show and not at all indicative of Douglas Hayes' talent as a director. It's not bad, but I wouldn't recommend it. I'd instead suggest Escape Clause for Thomas Gomez's superior character, Execution or Mr. Denton on Doomsday for a better Old West episode, and just about any other installment directed by Hayes. Like a tumbleweed blowing across the desert, it's best to let this one pass you by and move on to a more thought-provoking story in the Twilight Zone.